For 2,000 years, the ancient lost city of Shekmu was one of Palestine's most enduring mysteries. Now known as Tel Balata, its origins date back to the Chalcolithic period in the 4th millennium BC. During the Middle and Late Bronze Age, it stood at the center of the world's trade routes, exporting livestock and grain to the Egyptian Empire, and trading with neighboring Canaanite city-states. They excelled in agriculture and trade, and helped develop the world's first alphabets. Later, the city became home to the ancient Samaritans, and was mentioned in both Egyptian texts and religious sources as being located between the mountains of Gerzim and Ebal. But after its decline, all traces of Shekmu disappeared. Unknown to the world, it lay buried underneath a dirt hill for nearly 2,000 years. Until the early 20th century, when archaeologists partnered with the villagers of Balata to help unearth one of Palestine's great lost cities. In 1903, German scholar Hermann Tersch used historic clues to search for the lost city of Shekmo in the village at the base of Mounts Gerzim and Ebal. Without needing to dig, he found the exposed remains of an old city wall at Tel Balata. And although he had no scientific proof, Tersch reported that he had found ancient Shechem. A few years later, Palestinian masons, building a home for a Balata village notable named Salim, stumbled upon a trove of ancient bronze artifacts. The finds included this 18th century Egyptian cattle branding stamp, used to mark livestock bound for Egypt, and this beautifully decorated curved sword, probably made in the city-state of Byblos. Unknown to the Masons, the trove gave essential clues to the existence of a commercial city. In 1913, another German scholar, Ernst Selling, began a two-season dig. He and his team unearthed the western part of the city wall, seen by Tersch, and discovered remains of the city's western gate. Archaeological findings suggest the gate may have looked like this. In 1926, Selen returned with a Dutch Near East specialist, Franz Boll, and for eight years worked with a team of hundreds of Palestinians, digging trench after trench through the mound. Men and women carefully exposed layer upon layer of Tel Balata's lost history. They discovered the remains of a large fortress-like temple with an altar, as well as handmade objects carved from stone, metal, and bone, and troves of pottery. But most intriguing, two clay tablets written in Akkadian cuneiform script. It was a letter from a teacher addressed to the father of his student, protesting that he had not been paid his salary. The finds began to tell scientists more and more about life in ancient Shekmu. They had traded with Egypt, educated their children, and gathered to worship ancient deities before a massive stone altar. The German-Dutch team also found this text, one of the first of its kind in the world. It marks the transition from earlier cuneiform or wedge-shaped texts and the use of a modern alphabet. This ancient text may have its 20th century echo in this 1931 photograph taken by Boll of children being tutored in Joseph's tomb. Archaeological research was interrupted temporarily during the political upheaval of the Nakba in 1948 and the displacement of Palestinians who found refuge in nearby Balata camp. Work began again in 1956 when G. Ernest Wright began a two-decade-long American expedition. 
they continued unearthing the Eastern Gate, as tentatively reconstructed by archaeological experts. It is now possible to imagine how Shekmu may have looked as a whole during its golden era, a time when it exported wheat and barley to the Egyptian Empire and the Canaanite city-states. The large eastern gate points to strong fortifications. Inside the walls, extended families or clans lived in two-story homes, which had courtyards for livestock. The central location of the temple, with its great stone altar for animal sacrifices, suggests the importance of religion to the people of the city. Archaeological finds at Tel Balata and faraway Egypt have helped us understand life in Shekmu during the Middle Bronze Age, when large regional empires dominated local politics and trade. This 19th century BC drawing of Canaanites trading with Egypt is one of the few surviving illustrations of how Canaanites looked and dressed. This figurine is an execration text found in Egypt. It places a curse on Shekmu. The dolls were smashed to activate the curse. In the Middle Bronze Age, Shekmu, like other Canaanite city-states, had an extensive cultural and commercial tie with Egypt, as evidenced in the material culture found throughout Canaan. Following the Battle of Megiddo in 1468 BC, Egypt dominated Canaan militarily and politically while vying with the Hittites for regional power. The eight-meter-tall city wall we see today was built to showcase the power of the king and to protect Shekmu from attacks by foreign and local enemies. Shekmu burnt to the ground several times, including in 1550 BC. Historic texts tell us little about Shekmu or its rulers, with one exception. King Labaya, who ruled around 1350 BC, 200 years following a major destruction. He rebuilt the city, revived trade, and promoted better craftsmanship. He paid tribute to the pharaoh, as depicted in Egyptian drawings. But Pharaoh Akhenaten's vassals reported that King Labaya was planning a rebellion against the Egyptian overlords. Labaya rejected the charges and pledged his allegiance. But he was arrested by the pharaoh's agents and killed near Jenin. During the Iron Age, Shekmu passed through Assyrian, Babylonian, and Persian control. In this period, Samaritans were among the Semitic peoples that lived in Shekmu. The remains of Samaritan stone houses were uncovered by the American expedition. According to tradition, Jesus would have walked through the fields of Tel Bulata on his way to nearby Jacob's well, when he stopped to rest and met a Samaritan woman. He spoke to her and drank her water. A Byzantine church was built over Jacob's well to commemorate the meeting. It was most recently renovated in the 20th century. By 72 AD, the Romans founded a new city in the hills to the west. They called it Flavia Neapolis, and it is today's Nablus. Roman ruins have been discovered under buildings throughout Nablus, along with a well-preserved Roman cemetery where notables of the empire were laid to rest. Mm -hmm. 
A cooperative effort teaming the Palestinian Department of Antiquities with the University of Leiden and UNESCO, with funding from the Kingdom of the Netherlands, is working to protect Tel Bolata by establishing an archaeological park. The old town of Nablus and its environment, including the archaeological park of Tel Bolata, have been included in the inventory of those properties which Palestine intends to consider for nomination to the UNESCO World Heritage List of sites of potential outstanding universal value. A visitor center, museum, and scientific publications have spread knowledge of Tel Bolata's rich past to the public, aided by new signs, pathways, and security measures. In 2011, a joint Palestinian-Dutch excavation, led by Hamdan Taha and Garrett van der Kooy, began uncovering previously unearthed parts of the mound. They also began social archaeology, recording oral histories of Balata villagers who worked on the excavations. The safeguarding of the archaeological site of Tel Balata is in line with UNESCO's mission to provide technical assistance to the Palestinian institutions and professionals that safeguard cultural heritage in both its tangible and intangible components, and in developing cultural and creative industries. Tel Bulata is an important part of Palestine's history and heritage, and with the help of modern archaeology, the lost story of its past continues to unfold.